guys, Raj Sanger of Cardi Security. Welcome back to the channel. Another cars and coffee event here at Cash HQ. We're in August. It's a couple of weeks before ULES kicks in. Some of you might ask, what is ULES? ULES stands for the Ultra Low Emission Zone. The Lord Mayor of Central London has extended the ULES Zone to Greater London. So if you've got a petrol car which is not Euro 4 emissions compliant, so maybe a 90s car, then unfortunately you're gonna to have to pay £12.50 a day to drive your car in London. And if you've got a diesel car, which is not Euro 6 compliant, and those regulations came out in September 2016, you're gonna to have to pay £12.50 a day. So we thought, you know what? pre ULES, let's get everyone down, let's have an event, weather's on our side. I'm gonna do what I always do at these events, walk and talk, show you some of the cars that are in the car park. So guys, let's get into it. So yeah, you've got some BMs that are rocking up behind me and you've got a selection of classic Mercs here. Now, who doesn't love a CL500? Just look at this thing. Stepped up BBSs, 17s to 19s. Apparently, this car belongs to a painter and I've got to say, looking at it, although there is a layer of dust, this paintwork looks amazing. And look, CL55 AMG belongs to Indy. He's been to quite a few of our cars and coffee events. This looks stunning. Uh, what size wheels are these? 20s. They look bigger. Maybe it's just the uh, stretch rubber. This looks stunning. So let me show you what's on this side. Who doesn't love an R129? This is an early one. So pre facelift. You could tell that by the three fins there. Matching hard top on there. Unfortunately, not ULES compliant, so you have to pay £12.50 a day to drive it. And just guys, look at this, look at the car park ram today. So predominantly BMs and Mercs, and that is probably our core customer base. Anyway, there are a few other brands mixed in between. Look, we've got a 1968 Ford Mustang there. Right next to it, we've got a classic Porsche 930. You get the drift guys it's a classic cars and coffee event bring whatever you want ULES compliant or not just bring it down it's open to everybody today so I think we need to find somebody and uh, have a chat with them about their classic car let's let's go and find somebody guys just check out this gorgeous Porsche. Now, it says it's a 930, so that refers to the car being a 930 turbo body, but it's not a 930 turbo. So, Jonathan, who's here with me. Hey, Jonathan, thanks Hi for there. coming. Nice to meet you, Red. He, nice to meet you too. He's calling it a Frankenstein car. So, yeah. um, I'm gonna let you expand on that. Cool. So, it's not a 930 turbo, is it? No, it's not. So, it started out life as a um, Porsche Targa, but um, through a bunch of- Hold on, did you say Porsche Targa? Yeah, underneath. The okay. actual chassis itself. Okay, all right. But, um, it's no yeah. longer a Targa. No, not at all. So, um, yeah, guys over at Zuffin House have built, built this about 10 years ago. What year is this car? Uh, 78. 45 years old, so it is ULEDs compliant. Because anything over 40 years old, Counts as a classic car, and therefore you don't need to pay that twelve pound fifty a day. Sorry, John. I was going to say I'm very yeah. glad I don't have to <laughs> yeah. pay that twelve pound fifty. But lucky um, man. Anyhow, um, it's got a um, RUF engine in there from RUF, so they built this car from the ground so up. So it's a factory roof engine in there. They've done some stuff to it. They put a big single turbo on there. Now I've noticed something here, guys. It says three point eight. Is it actually a three point eight engine? Three point six. So three point six. Okay. So it's not a nine thirty turbo and it's not a 3.8. That's why he called it a Frankenstein. Indeed. <laughs> so it's a 3.6 roof engine pushing out. About 450 on the dyno. So Damn, that's a lot of power. Uh, I mean, no wheel, uh, traction control, no ABS. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, but, rear wheel yeah. drive, all the power is back end here. And uh, yeah, we did an all cooler on there, KW um, V3 suspension. And fun fact uh, about the wheels, they came from the Driftworks car, the, the RWB. So they were originally uh, the, the silver and gold that you can see, but right. we got them resprayed before we bought the car. When you did pull in, 
this sounded naughty. <laughs> Thank um, you. Now I've said that, obviously I've got to give you guys a listen. So what are you saying, Jonathan? Oh, I was going to say, I think my battery's dead. This is the first time I've pulled the car out okay. this year. I'll tell you what, we'll come back to it. We'll, we'll, we'll do a rev test and, a, yeah, and a, cool. a noise test later on. But it's a stunning looking car. Thank you. Um, you say, it's, is it your car or your dad's car? So it's actually my dad's car. He doesn't live in the country. So my brother and I, we just kind of bring his cars out. A bit of fun here and there. So cheers, dad. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Lovely car. Uh, fantastic road presence. Thank you. ULES compliant. Frankenstein car. Indeed it is. Uh, mate, it looks uh, stunning. Thanks for bringing it down. We'll bring you some uh, sound clips shortly. Right, Cheers, thank Jonathan. Thank Thanks, you. mate. Cheers. So unfortunately, if you have a transporter T5 or T6 and it's sort of pre-2017, it's not ULES compliant. Sorry guys, Alpine, you built this fantastic van. It sounds the absolute nuts, but it's not ULES compliant. That is shocking. Great build here, guys. So you got four 12-inch Type X subs underneath here, where I'm sitting underneath the seat and you've got two Type R 10s there, and you've got eight Alpine X-Series amplifiers there. So yeah, lovely van, but not ULES compliant. Figure that out. So yeah, the Frankenstein 930, Targa, non-Targa, 3.8, but actually it's a 3.6. 68 Mustang, my E36 M3, which isn't ULES compliant. We've got a lovely Mercedes R107. We've had this car here before at our previous car and coffee events. Uh, E30 Touring, in fact, we've got some E30s over here as well. We've got our E30 LTO out. Next to that, I've got my E30 M3 convertible and then my E30 M3 Coupe. And then the VAG crew. Now, this Mark II here, which belongs to Vic, is very special. In fact, look how special it is. Smooth engine bay, VR6 lump, stunning car. I think we need to grab Vic and have a chat with Vic about this gorgeous Mark II Golf. So we've managed to track down Vic, he is here. Thanks for coming, Vic. No problems, no problems. Gorgeous car, mate. Thank you. Thank You've you. had this a while, haven't you? It's been about 24 years now. That's a while. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this car many a time before at predominantly West Side VW yes. and bag shows. Yes. I think that's probably the only time you bring it out. Exactly, yes. It's, I can see there's a lot of love that's gone into this car, and I'll, I'll show you that in a moment, but that's a work of art, mate. I know, I know. Um, it took me a long time to get this done. This is the final build I'm going to do. And when I was building it, I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it properly. So um, I took it to my garage, no electrics, just uh, hand tools, everything. So you've built done this yourself? There. Yes, built everything on myself. 2.8? 2.8, turbocharged. He's not messing so about, is he, guys? And he's done this in his garage. Um, what kind of power do you reckon this is? OK, I had this on the rollers. I got it uh, mapped uh, last year. Uh, basically, it was running 352. So and 352 and at 432 um, torques. Wow, I have a car that probably weighs 950 to 1,000 kilos. It's correct, yes. That's a lot of power. Can you actually get that power down? You need to learn how to drive the car. You can't put the power down straight. You need to feather it down. Yeah. And that's when you can get, obviously, the full whack out of it. But yeah, it's fun. This thing must be an absolute animal. Um, who's done all the paintwork and, you know, the smooth engine bay? Uh, basically, this is my brother, um, SS Auto Bodies, Sonny. So basically, I got all the prep work done and he just obviously finished it all up. So it's a proper family affair. You've got the brother painting the car and you've got Vic doing all the engine conversion. This is a J-plate car, yes? J-plate, that's correct. So non ULES compliant? It is, yes. But you're still going to drive it though, aren't of you? Of course I am, yes. <laughs> Guys, check out this interior. Where are these seats from? What seats car? Porsche GT3s. So who's actually done the interior? 
Uh, it's a local guy, a guy called Junior. He did all the work, he did the trim and everything. The when you say local, local to you? Yeah, local to me, yes. Which is South East London? It's going to be Romford. Romford, okay. Yes. Carbon cage as well. This is absolutely stunning. Suspension wise, what are you running? Divisional Avos, back in the days. BBSs? BBSs. And as well as Vic and his brother painting the car, engine swap, smooth engine bay, interior done. There's actually audio as well. So he has gone the full hog. That's a fantastic audio install. Alpine head unit up front, three Rockford P110 inch subs, all run off this Audison Ampere. Who's done the install? Um, I basically bought it like that, but I had to trim it down a little bit, just put it in on myself. Guys, what do you think of this? This is probably one of the best Mark IIs that I've seen. And believe you and me, between myself and Palm, we've seen a lot of Mark IIs in our time. Um, mate, it's stunning, absolutely stunning. Credit thank to you. you. Thank well you, thank you. Well done. Nice one. Keep enjoying it. I will and do. Uh, guys, what do you think of this Mark II? Drop a comment below. On this side of the car park, we've got a car which is ULES compliant because it's 53 years old. This 600 grocer belongs to Jack. Now, from what Jack says, and I believe him, this is Kofi Annan's car. There's a, I believe, a Motorola phone holder. In fact, Jack wants to know what phone fits in this phone holder because he wants to get one. So if you guys know what phone fits that, drop a comment and I'll let Jack know. Check out the back, guys. Check out this legroom, guys. Lovely Motorola phone. Obviously not period correct, because in 1970, they didn't have Motorola phones, but it's got the matchy-matchy the color on the actual phone and the actual holder, matches all the trim there. Lovely car. So in our workshop today, uh, we've got Jay working on the customer's MX-5. What are you saying, Jay? My 964 in slate grey. R129, this is the customers. We've got this 840Ci, which currently is undergoing some airlift performance treatment. Yes, we are slamming that on the ground. And we've got one of our latest purchases, this 964 in Guards Red C2. All four of these cars, you guessed it guys, not ULES compliant. Guys, check out this Datsun 510 SR20 with a Garrett Turbo. We pulled out our Cosy today, so I know guys, it's not Cosworth, because the 2.3 had the Cosworth head, but it sounds so much cooler when you say Cosworth. E30, E24, 635, another E30. Even got a Fiesta here, hot rodded Fiesta. Another E24. Guys, another Cosworth. But this one's a proper Cosworth. Ford Sierra Sapphire Cosworth. And the engine bay is open for a reason. So let's grab the owner, let's have a chat, and he can talk about numbers and power. Because why else would you have your engine bay open? <laughs> Guys, we all love Cosies. And this is a special Sierra Sapphire Cosworth. The owner is here, Matt. Matt, thanks for coming down. Nice to meet you, Ross. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Now, the engine bay is open for a reason. Why is that? Yeah, it's had a full engine bay restoration about five years ago. Everything came out. Uh, the engine bay went back to bare metal. I've had it all painted. You can actually see that. It's so clean. So it's stock, what kind of power do these push out stock? 224 stock. And this is? This is 393. I told you there's a reason why this engine bay is open. Uprated turbo, injectors, porting to the head, cams have been done. And do you know who's done that work? Yeah, it's a company called Heart Power. These are four wheel drive, aren't they? This one's a four wheel drive. So getting the power down isn't really an issue. It's not too bad. What year is this car? It's a 1993 K plate. Again, not ULES compliant. Now, color wise, it's Nouveau Red. You um, red and just... only, only did this one in uh, the 4x4 later models. Okay, so it's a limited run in this yeah. shape. Suspension, is it stock or have you changed that? No, it's on a Coney 
Uh, suspension. Adjustable suspension. Yeah. And Compromotives. Yeah. I haven't seen them for a while. 17s. They actually look small on the car. Yeah, 17 by 8 they are. Um, ET35. They're kind of a go-to wheel for Cosworth owners. Yeah, Ford, Ford owners yeah. love these wheels. Some boost gauges here as well. Yeah, boost and all pressure gauges. Stunning looking car. Thank you. Credit to you, mate. As I said earlier on, guys, who doesn't love a Cosy? Thanks for bringing that, Matt. No worries, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cosworth is something special. We've got Crado here and even a Ford Cortina. 1600E, lovely colour combo. This sort of gold over the tan. And my uh, 840Ci E31, why not? Actually this, believe it or not, will be ULES compliant. So guys, lovely selection of cars today for our pre ULES Cars and Coffee event. We've had JDM, we've had BMW, we've had Mercedes, we've had a Porsche 930, not a 930 Frankenstein car, you know the one I showed you earlier on. So you get the idea, lovely selection of classics out today. Thanks for everyone that's popped by the cash showroom today to our Cars and Coffee event. Uh, it's great to see some old faces and to see some new faces, guys, car of the show for you. Some great cars here in the car park today. Uh, for me, it's got to be the Frankenstein 930. That's not a 930. You know, 400 odd brake horsepower in a car that's probably what? 1,100 kilos. But close second is Vix Mark II Golf. That is stunning in itself. Guys, thanks for watching. You know what you need to do. You need to smash that like button. Uh, let us know which is the car of the event that you liked here. And there's a good selection, I said earlier on. Our next Cars and Coffee event, details will be on the CAS website in the description below. If you click on the link, you'll find out when it is. It's possibly going to be a Porsche event sometime in mid-September, or maybe towards the end of September. Guys, thanks for watching. You know what you need to do. Smash the like button. Make sure you share and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Loads of content coming your way. I'll see you again on Cast TV soon.